And joining us now, Charles Pascal, Dalton McGinty Special Advisor on Early Learning. He is the author of the just-released report with our best future in mind. Welcome back to our studio. Thanks, Steve. Nice to, to have here. you in that chair again. Dalton McGinty, of course, in 2007 tasked you with writing a report on how to implement full-day kindergarten, and you have done just that. And for those of our viewers who haven't read it or seen it, we're going to give some of the highlights here on what you've recommended. Starting with full-day kindergarten for four- and five-year-olds starting in 2010. That's not that far away. Province-wide by 2013. Fee-based after-school and summer programming at schools for children up to 12 years old based on demand. 400 days of paid parental leave after birth or adoption by the year 2020. Lots more, obviously, in the report, but those are some of the highlights. And I guess I want to start by asking, what research led you to those conclusions? Well, uh, I, um, I traveled uh, all over Ontario uh, trying to catch people doing things right. I looked at uh, the best practice in Ontario and the rest of Canada, and also Western Europe, and all of the evidence um, that, uh, that I could find. And the best evidence and best practice suggests that uh, what we're planning for Ontario is, uh, is going to uh, provide us uh, with an opportunity to be a beacon not only for the rest of Canada, but uh, well beyond. What social benefits do you think will result from all day kindergarten? Well, right now, um, Steve, about 25%, that's what I put in the report, it's actually closer to 27%, of kids show up in the first grade uh, seriously behind, significantly behind their peers. And there's a host of other kids, maybe 20, 25% that I would describe as doing okay. Others would describe as muddling through with unidentified challenges. Uh, the consequences of this for what our teachers in first grade and beyond have to deal with in terms of uh, you know, dealing with it later on, which is very difficult, makes it uh, much harder for, uh, for classroom teachers as well as uh, high school teachers, it, it compounds itself uh, negatively, is, is just very difficult. It's also very costly. So this is about success for kids. It's also about uh, greater well-being for families uh, because of all the, uh, the heartache that goes with dealing with unidentified problems or putting together patchwork child care in combination with half-day kindergarten. So it's a, it's a big benefit for, for all of us. But let me follow up on that 25 to 27 percent, yeah. whatever it is. Why would they be behind? Well, they would be behind for a host of, uh, of uh, things that are identifiable, like you know, perhaps uh, issues of autism have presented themselves, or they have uh, issues with reading. They might have unidentified um, uh, learning disabilities. In the case of, of my own child, if I can be autobiographical, I have a 14-year-old who, uh, who wasn't always the self-confident honor student uh, she is right now, all set to, to go from eighth grade uh, uh, next uh, fall to, uh, to high school, but earlier on uh, there was a disconnect be, uh, between her, her wonderful ability to express things verbally, uh, you know, bright kid with lots of ideas, but the, the disconnect uh, between that and putting something on paper uh, was obvious to an early uh, learning uh, educator uh, who had a conversation with dad, uh, a great conversation, even though dad was a little defensive about somebody saying to me, you, you must be joking. Uh, my, my, this beautiful child is perfect. Uh, Charles, she said, just have a closer look at how this is all going on. I did, and about two weeks later, because I have a Rolodex where I could identify uh, somebody who's a great diagnostician, and I had the money and the benefits plan to put out $1,500, get $1,200 back, she went from an identified, uh, very difficult to see learning problem to back on track in six weeks. Not the six months, not the 18 months, and not the two years that many parents over the past 18 months have talked about. But is it your assertion that, that with early childhood education or full-day kindergarten, that kind of thing, these problems get identified earlier and therefore don't present later on? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you, if you look at the, uh, the McMurtry uh, curling report that was tabled about six months ago on youth violence, or you look at the uh, uh, men incarcerated in medium and maximum security uh, prisons, you will find a 80% uh, illiteracy problem. Uh, the, illiter the, the, the prison of illiteracy, uh, where does that begin? It begins very early. It compounds itself with a, a loss of self-esteem. So you can draw a straight line between that You can draw a straight line. It's, yeah. it's not an accident that the prosperity report by Roger Martin and Richard Florida on a prosperous economy, the poverty reduction strategy uh, offered by the, the government uh, six months ago and the McMurtry curling, they all have one thing in common. They all talk about the number one investment priority is the early years. And the gains uh, to be made throughout one's life and to the taxpayer, it's not folly. 
Okay. And, and the evidence uh, is there to, to uh, defend that. You mentioned the taxpayer, and that's who I get to talk about next. I'm, I'm one of them, and I, I assume you're paying your taxes too. As far as I know, I am. Yeah. Um, okay. How much? Well, the, the report uh, uh, describes the full day learning at a cost when it's fully implemented. I'm recommending a three-year phase-in. Uh, the all-in after uh, uh, full implementation is anywhere from 790 million to uh, 990 million. Uh, the 200 million difference is depending on the take-up of the uh, before and after-school uh, fee-based program, as your uh, intro uh, noted, as well as summertime programming. All the capital that's required for schools that are crowded uh, is, is all built into uh, some capital costs as well. And uh, that's, that's about what it should be. The numbers are pretty good, uh, pretty sound numbers. You know, of course, this province is $18 billion in the hole this year, running an $18 billion deficit. We have the money for this? We can't afford not to have the money for this. I know uh, everybody says that when they well, want something, but the fact is we're $18 million in the red this well, year. Well, uh, uh, it, it, it probably is in my bio that I'm an advisor. Uh, I am, I'm not the premier. <laughs> Although the Premier's response to this, uh, not just in the last couple of days, but uh, throughout the conversations I've had with him, uh, we, we can't afford not to do this. The, the, the implementation uh, plan is a strenuous plan, and I'm, I'm recommending a phase-in of three years for the full-day learning for four- and five-year-old kids, and I'm recommending that based on quality. Quality is number one. The cash flow side of things may, may actually work quite well. I mean, I'm recommending something based on not rushing it, uh, but you have to have, you ha this has to be driven with uh, a time frame. You know, you have a walking on the moon uh, goal, an aspiration that we're going to walk on the moon in, in 10 years, said a, uh, a former American president. You have to have a, a goal that drives things. And so I've given uh, the government three years, a recommendation with all the details required and, and the recommendation about the money. Has he told you he'll do it? Yeah, I mean, he's told the public he's, uh, he's starting uh, on time, day after Labor Day 2010. He's, to, he's said, what, what's the first take-up, $200 million or something like that? For the first, uh, first year is $200 million and... Uh, okay, so he's committed to that much, but he's committed to the $990 million that you see at the end of the day? Well, he has not said, uh, you know, uh, publicly we will do it, uh, you know, in this order or whatever, but uh, based on the conversations I've had with him and others, and, you know, the public at large is, is going to... Uh, you know, create a, uh, a certain kind of response. I, I can tell you one thing uh, based on uh, the information I have not only in the last 18 months in terms of the thousands of parents I've heard from along with practitioners and, uh, and experts, but as we're talking here when we're finished in the green room, uh, let's look at my Blackberry and I, I guarantee you there will be uh, 20 or more emails from parents. Uh, when is this coming? Uh, not to my school board, but but, but to my okay, neighborhood. Fair enough. But uh, once upon a time, Michael Fullan was in that chair. You know Michael Fullan, of course, in Boise, and he's a Premier's yep. education advisor as yep. well, Tony Blair's education advisor. And I remember asking him, if you had a billion dollars burning a hole in your pocket, would you spend it on reducing class size, which is what this Premier wants to do first and foremost? And he said, no, that's not what I would consider to be a top priority. So here's the call for another billion dollars to do something that obviously you and many others think is important for education. And the question is, if you had that billion burning a hole, is this the first place you'd spend it? It's not only the first place I would spend it. Uh, I might take a little side trip for the weekend if it was my money, uh, but I would come back and I would spend it on early child development. It is, it is the game maker. It's the deal maker when it comes to saving kids, when it comes to greater success for kids and more prosperity for, for all of us. It is a billion dollars, every dollar invested in this, if we do this right, has a return of up to $17 on the dollar. I mean, the, this has is, this is, uh, been proven uh, by evidence, whether it's a 42-year uh, study, uh, the Ypsilanti study that, uh, that we've talked about before, Steve, on the program, that, uh, that is uh, returning 17 on a dollar, or David Butler Jones a year ago, the medical officer of Health of Canada, who talks about the return on investment. And so uh, regarding uh, uh, this as an investment, uh, it is the economic stimulus package to use today's lexicon mm -hmm. that will keep on giving. It's a no-brainer when it comes to the economy of, of things. Here's some of what you want the money to sp be spent on. And Michael, if we can, we'll bring up this uh, capital project, uh, uh, what's needed here. New purpose-built classrooms for full-day learning, approximately 2,500 classrooms in 1,400 schools. Renovation of approximately 1,200 surplus classrooms in 950 schools. Renovation of approximately 1,100 classrooms in 780 schools used for kindergarten but not purpose-built. That's from your report. Now that's 
pretty ambitious. Is it possible to do all of that within the kind of timelines you've laid out? Well, the, in the first year, uh, the report describes uh, the, the schools that are capital ready, that don't require anything. It's 35% of the schools. So when you phase this in, I said earlier this is about quality driving these. You want the first year to create a lighthouse excitement uh, for the phase two and three schools to, to pay attention to learn from. So the first phase will have, uh, obviously there'll be a lot of criteria that the premier and his government will choose to, including some low income neighborhoods that's important as, as part of uh, phase one. But 35% of the schools are all ready to go. Regarding all the other additions where uh, there's a need for, uh, in, in Peel Region, for example, uh, outside of Toronto, extension of Toronto, uh, you know, very crowded schools, the capital uh, money uh, that's required is built into the report, built into the numbers. And frankly, we're talking about a whole bunch of infrastructure projects as we speak, mm -hmm. about creating short-term jobs. Shovel ready, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, sh shovel ready. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is, when I talk about an economic stimulus package that, that, that keeps on giving, we're building bridges and buildings, and that's important. And, and we're building good things with infrastructure money. Uh, and, and that's all the good. It's creating jobs. <coughs> and by the way, people who are you know, looking for work um, ha have to have really good non-parental care and supports. Uh, people need to retrain. That's why this keeps on giving. It creates jobs in the short run and creates a, a bridge to the future. The social infrastructure is something that people are starting to talk about, and it's as important as the physical stuff. Did you read your Globe and Mail this morning, Dr. Pascal? I read the Globe and Mail uh, when it hits the front door at five minutes after five every morning. <laughs> did you read the editorial in the Globe and Mail this morning? I did read the, uh, the Globe and Mail editorial. Not the most complimentary. Uh, let, let me. I, I didn't write it. I know. <coughs> I'm sure you didn't. Let me pluck a little um, excerpt out of that and we'll talk. With full day kindergarten, the Globe editorialized this morning, inequities, vulnerabilities, learning problems will purportedly wither and an innovative, advanced generation will arise. However, it goes on to say, Quebec has full-day kindergarten and, since 1997, a massive state-financed daycare program. The province's high school dropout rate is high. Alberta has done little for early childhood education, yet its high school students score high on international tests. Apparently, the globe does not see what you see, which is this direct line between a big investment in early childhood education and a big payoff at the end of the day. Are they wrong? Yeah, they're, they're wrong, and uh, unfortunately their deadline was different from my deadline. I, I had a deadline that I started uh, 18 months ago, and I, you know, I don't want to, uh, it's, it's a great newspaper, uh, but, um, you know, I, I was served up fruit salad uh, with, that, with that editorial because they're mixing and matching a whole bunch of things. Um, if, we, if, if you can give me an hour as part of this conversation, <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to dissect, uh, you know, uh, point by point. But the notion that, um, you know, 60% of all vulnerable kids do not live in low-income homes. Um, I assume whoever wrote the editorial, you know, may, may not know that. They may, may think that's all low-income. In, low, low um, the notion that vulnerabilities uh, carry through, as we've already discussed, is it's not just a no-brainer intuitively. Uh, the research and evidence where this has been done well uh, this will be the first province that has full day learning for four and five year olds in Canada. Uh, we could take various provinces you talked about and I could give you reasons why uh, these data show this and, and uh, this province shows that. But they just got it wrong basically you think? Yeah, they got it wrong. Yeah, they did. Okay. Let's, uh, they don't often get uh, things wrong but... Uh, but they are journalists so we know they're imperfect. Well, uh, I'm married to one and I, I understand that. Uh, <laughs> uh, you and my wife are probably the closer to perfection. but. But on the things I know about, um, I can tell you whether they're right or wrong. So. Okay. Let's uh, move on and talk about um, the head of the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario, who also has some concerns about this, David Clegg, who said allowing early childhood educators to take charge of classes for partial or whole days would be a, quote, erosion of education, noting teachers receive more training. I know the Premier has said that the early childhood educators and the elementary teachers have got to learn to play nice together in the sandbox. But can you give us anything more concrete which would yeah. lead us to believe that yeah. that's actually got a shot at happening? Uh, well, uh, let, let me be, uh, it, won't, it won't happen. It's, um, I don't want to uh, talk about any particular individual. Let me simply say this report is an enemy of the status quo. And according to the Premier, who had a more interesting and colorful line yesterday, uh, you know, everybody has to ask what uh, they can do for their kids uh, and families, um, which seems to be a paraphrase of, uh, of Teddy Sorensen, who, who wrote a similar line for JFK. Uh, the, the fact is, let, let's just talk about the facts. <coughs> Kindergarten teachers 
uh, about a third of them in Ontario, have early childhood development and training and the ability to apply them. A whole bunch of other uh, kindergarten teachers are wonderfully intuitive and they're great with kids. But in, uh, in the preparation of, of teachers, uh, whether they have a, 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 a bachelor's of, of education or a master's, but let's take the bachelor, which uh, the individual you're referring to uh, is, is talking about, they have a smattering, if at all, of early child development. I, I've talked to every, uh, every dean uh, of uh, every faculty of education in Ontario. And so it's not, the, it's not the degree, it's what the degree stands for. But do the unions have a reason to be concerned about this? For reasons that uh, have to do with children and families, no. But for reasons of their membership, maybe yes. Uh, there's no job loss. There's job creation as part of this. And uh, some people need to catch up to the future that already exists, if I could explain that for a moment. Uh, there are kindergarten teachers and early childhood educators creating something larger than the sum of their, their own individual gifts in Ontario as we speak. I, I spoke to, uh, I've heard from uh, this morning, I would say about 15 or 16 kindergarten teachers from places in the province, some of them in the French boards, that have had this for over 10 years. I uh, heard from uh, somebody from London, Ontario, where they've got the same kind of program. Uh, there's teachers in the French board in, uh, in the wonderful municipality called Hamilton, which you may be familiar I with. I am indeed. Uh, that uh, has had uh, the use of kindergarten teachers working with early childhood developer, uh, early childhood educators uh, for a number of years. And uh, the future is already here. It's here, it's being demonstrated all over the province and elsewhere. So I understand people have to do what they have to do, but people have to do some things differently. This is the enemy of the status quo, this report. All of us, whether we're advisors to government, in government, in the municipalities, working with kids, uh, we all have to do something better all with one question in mind, and that's what's best for so kids. So if the unions want to take their kind of, uh, I don't want to say knee-jerk parochial interest, but okay, let's put it out there like that. If they want to go that route, that's just, that's not on. The Premier's not going to allow for that. Uh, I, you'll have to talk to the Premier about that, but, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is something that already exists. And, uh, you know, I, I went this morning, uh, uh, there's a, a young principal in a school in Toronto uh, who's been in, uh, leading transformational stuff with, uh, teachers and early childhood educators, and I, I uh, heard him on the radio this morning uh, at another CBC program uh, that happens to be called Metro Morning, and I, I just went over to the school and, and I gave him a copy of the report and said, you know, you're leading the future. Uh, this already exists. Okay. Let's do one more thing here, and that is uh, rural areas. We have a lot of people watching us in rural Ontario who will wonder whether or not this makes sense for them because putting a four-year-old on a bus for an hour or an hour and a half uh, may not be what they had in mind for little Johnny or Janie. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, the whole, uh, that's a really important question, and, and uh, my travels to the north in very remote areas and, and less remote areas, I mean, we have a wonderful, diverse, beautiful province. Uh, uh, one of the reasons for having this elementary school based, including these child and family centers that's going to consolidate all these services and provide cost-effective uh, services to get over fragmentation for kids from zero up to four, uh, locating these in and around elementary schools uh, in geographically uh, uh, sensitive locations is going to end um, uh, a huge amount of travel that's, that's already taking place that's uh, you know, not overly uh, healthy for kids and families. I want to do uh, one last thing here, and that is take a look at that monitor right there on your left. And oh when you God. were here in November of 2007 to kick <laughs> off your appointment and uh, looking into all of uh, this, that was you. I think we have another shot as well. Oh that boy. was you from the side view. So I, my last question for you, Dr. Pascal, is where's the rest of you today? Well, I'm, uh, I'm obviously, <laughs> boy, that's a surprise. I'm, I'm obviously half the man I used to be. Uh, you're, you're 95 pounds less for, than you used to be. Since uh, the Premier announced my appointment, when you and I last chatted, when I was last in this chair, I've lost 90 pounds. And I guess, uh, I, I guess you could attribute it to the fact that I've been chasing four- and five-year-old kids all over the province for 18 months. I should say, uh, in addition to uh, that picture, which I hope you will bury forever, <laughs> uh, the most fun I had, I met with over, in one way or another, 15,000 uh, people contributed to this, 83 round pa tables, thousands of practitioners, teachers, and others. The most fun I had was actually a little round table with four and five-year-olds in Toronto, and I had to learn how to sit in a circle instead of on a chair, and that was part of the motivation. But would you please do me a favor <laughs> and, and get rid of that? Uh, 
Just take that from the archive. I don't know if we can do that. Can't do that. I think it's Just there in forever. case I gain weight again. I think yeah. it's there forever. All right. Thank you so much. Anyway, it's good of you to come in today, 90 pounds less than last time, and uh, share the um, information behind your report. Of course, people can go to our website, tvo.org slash the agenda, find out more about your early childhood education report. And we thank you for coming in and talking to us thank about Thank you so today. much. Thanks, Steve.